July 634, somewhere near the city of Damascus in Syria. Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Abu Ubaidah radiallahu ta'ala anhu are discussing the battle strategy in the Muslim camp. Recently, the Muslims have had a series of victory against the Romans and gained control of several cities and vast sorts of lands in eastern and southern Syria. Bushra had been the latest achievement for the Muslim campaign. After that, Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anhu decided to concentrate the focus of the campaign to Damascus. So he ordered Shurahbil radiallahu ta'ala anhu to camp at Bushra with his troops. Most of the soldiers from Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Abu Ubaidah radiallahu ta'ala anhu then started marching towards Damascus. Part of the troops were also stationed in different locations across the newly acquired land to establish the control of Islamic caliphate in those regions. During the march towards Damascus, Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anhu received the news of Roman forces gathering in Ajnadain. The Roman emperor Heraclius did not take the matter of Muslim conquest lightly. The sudden emergence of the Muslims and taking control of Roman territories one after another made the matter serious for him. He decided to call his war council and gather forces to fight the Muslims off. A Byzantine general named Wardan was ordered to lead the army. Wardan planned to attack Bushra first and take Shurahbil radiallahu ta'ala anhu's army out. It would make the army of Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anhu separated and would prevent the army of Yazid which was located south of river Yarmouk and army of Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhu which was located in the valley of Araba to come to the rescue. Based on this information, Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Abu Ubaidah radiallahu ta'ala anhu has to choose their actions. They decided to not wait for the Romans to start first, rather move towards the Roman camp with combined forces of the Muslims and stop the enemy there. So in the third week of July 634, the Muslim army started marching away from Damascus towards Ajnadain and reached the destination on July 24. The army of Amr bin al-As joined the rest of the Muslims the following day. In modern estimates, the Muslims had around 20,000 men and the Romans had around 60,000. The two armies camped on the battlefield facing each other. On 29th of July, Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anhu ordered the Muslim army to take battle formation right after the morning prayer. As the Romans were much higher in number, they could easily surround the Muslim army from two sides. To prevent that, Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anhu stretched the Muslim line up to 8 kilometers, spanning the whole span of the plain. For that reason, it was not possible for Muslim army to perform any swift maneuver in the middle without sacrificing the strength of the defense line. So it had to be a confrontation of pure strength. Still, Khalid radiallahu ta'ala who ordered 4,000 horsemen to stay behind the battle line as reverse force. When the Romans saw the Muslims taking battle formation, they also arranged their army for confrontation. The Romans made the first move. The Roman archers has greater range than the Muslims. So the Roman general Wardan started with archers to attack the Muslim front line and provoke the Muslims to launch a general attack. But Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anhu did not fall for the trick of Wardan. Rather, he ordered Muslim warriors to challenge the Romans for duels. Once the warriors moved forward and challenged, the Roman archers stopped shooting and the duel began. One after another, ten duels were fought and the majority of them were won by the Muslim warriors. As a result, the Romans lost some confidence and Khalid radiallahu ta'ala who chose this moment to launch the Muslim attack. The two armies fought each other for the rest of the day until darkness started to creep in. After day one, the battle had no decisive result. On the following day, the battle started again with Muslim warriors challenging the Romans for duels. During one of these duels, Wardan himself was killed. It was a huge boost of morale for the Muslims and they immediately launched the general attack. The fight broke down along the entire front and both parties did heavy damage to each other. After several hours of fighting, 
both armies started to be exhausted, but no clear result was near. To tip the balance of the situation, Khalid Radiallahu Talan who ordered the 4,000 Muslim horsemen in reverse to launch an attack. With the help of this force, the Muslims could finally break the Roman defense. And soon after that, the Roman resistance collapsed entirely. The Roman soldiers started to escape the battlefield. The Muslim fighters continued to chasing the Romans. As a result, the casualty on the Roman side became significantly higher than the Muslims. Some estimates suggest that among the 60,000 Roman soldiers, only around 20,000 survived the onslaught. It was a great victory for the Muslims and it shocked the core of Roman dominance in Syria. The Roman Emperor Heraclius left the provenance and moved to Antioch for the fear of his life. The tale of the fearless spirits of the Muslims spread it throughout the region and created panic in the heart of the Roman garrison. The next target of Muslim conquest of Syria was now close at hand. The capital of Roman Syria, Damascus. We will focus on the conquest of Damascus and the battle of Yarmouk in the upcoming period inshallah. So stay tuned.